This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Today we're going to deep fry some coffee. Now, you might ask why, you probably should ask why, and I'll give you a couple of different reasons. Firstly, I've kind of always wanted to do it. I remember seeing this years and years ago on a forum, I think coffeegeek.com, someone had done it, and I was like, I should try that one day. And two, well, I think it would be kind of interesting. Allow me, just for a minute, to nerd out. In the world of coffee roasting, the best analogy in most kitchens is something actually like an air fryer. Now, the way a traditional coffee roaster works, a drum roaster, is that you've got a big spinning drum, a bit like a kind of washing machine, tumbling the coffee around as a big fan pulls hot air from the burners through the drum. Now, in coffee roasting, that air is doing the work. That air is doing most of the roasting. That's convection. There's a little bit of radiant heat. You've got a big cast iron drum that's very hot. That will radiate heat into the coffee. And there's some conduction too. When the green coffee is touching the hot metal drum, however briefly that might be, that is some conductive heat. A deep fat fryer is a little different. Now we've got some really effective conduction going on here because the very hot oil is going to transfer heat very effectively into the coffee. I don't know how it's going to go. I don't know how it's going to make the coffee taste. I don't know if we're really going to learn anything, but we have to find out. I'm going to be roasting about 100 grams of a very nice Ethiopian washed coffee. Uh, and I picked this because I happen to have some here. Uh, I want 100 grams because I don't really want to crash the temperature of the oil when I put it in, so that's why it's not too much. This oil is about 170 degrees Celsius. We might need to go a bit hotter, but I, I thought I'd kind of start there, see how it goes. I'm going to put my coffee gently into my basket. I am a little worried about some beans falling through. I thought this, this mesh would be fine enough, but maybe I was wrong. And what I'll do is I'll set this up right in front of me so you can have a kind of bird's eye view of the coffee as it roasts. Now I'm going to do this with the lid off. If you fry things at home, you'll know, keep the lid on. That's a good idea. But I'll be very careful and, and mostly monitoring through the camera. I just want to see what happens. I want to see what goes on when you deep fry coffee. That oil is looking hot. We're at 170. All right, good luck, little coffee. Off you go. Ooh, I thought there'd be more fizz. Again, because there's not that much moisture on the surface, you don't get that initial bubbling as whatever moisture evaporates turns to steam. Uh, this, where you can see there is some moisture coming out of it, there is some steam as it roasts, there'll be some CO2 that comes out, other stuff like that, but that's pretty gentle to start with. Color-wise, ooh, going brown, we're going brown. Now it's going to be pretty hard to roast by color. Uh, in a coffee roaster, with a, just like a traditional drum roaster, the very exterior of the bean will be a little bit darker than the interior of the bean. Here, again, I'd expect the very outside to look a fair bit darker than the inside. I don't know how well the heat's transferring, but the bit touching the hottest stuff will go the darkest the fastest. So it's going to be hard to judge from color, especially because the oil will make it kind of glossy on the outside too. That's not done yet. Uh, needs to be to be more fried, but I really don't know how we're progressing. I can think about time, and we're we're nearly ten minutes into the fry. I don't know if that's a short or a long time for frying coffee. There's not a, a large body of literature there yet. What's interesting here, looking at this, is that the color is getting towards where we want it to go. But what's not happening is the kind of puffing up that you would expect. Uh, from a coffee bean when you roast it. Now, usually in the roasting process, all of this kind of chemistry, this evaporation of moisture, that builds up kind of steam pressure inside the bean as well as other gases, that kind of builds enough pressure that at some point the bean cracks open, uh, and that's called first crack. And, and in any roasting process, you'd mark when that happens. But that's not happening here. There's no first crack. But I'm I'm surprised. Not that there's no first crack, but that, that beans, I thought they'd puff a little bit more than they have. They're really still very small. That's concerning when it comes time to grind this, because it will be less brittle, less porous than a traditional coffee bean, and so grinding it might be really difficult. Okay, I think we're pretty much done. The goal is initially going to be to get as much oil off these beans as we can. I don't want to shake this over the fryer because I'm worried about losing beans back into the oil. Uh, that means that the basket's going to be a bit oily when I dump them out onto some paper towel, which I happily have here. It's time to take it out. We lost a fair amount to the fryer, not gonna lie. First, just a quick paper toweling. A little greasy still. You see the chaff all over all over the kitchen towel, which is good over the tea towel. We're not looking too greasy. It's still a bit hot. They're cool enough to touch 
You can see we're getting rid of the chaff nicely. There's something kind of weird about the fact that holding a fan over some freshly deep fried coffee doesn't feel that weird to me, but uh, yeah. So this is cooled now. The fan works surprisingly well. The oil's off. It's not too greasy. You can see there's a number of just underdeveloped, under fried beans. I'm just going to screen those out now. And then once I've got rid of those, I'll portion out some coffee. You can see here, obviously, these shinier looking, kind of darker looking beans are the fried beans. This is a, a same coffee, I think, roasted in a traditional way, looking very nice and tasty. Uh, but you can see the size difference. You know, the, the roasted beans, the air roasted beans are bigger, puffier than our little deep fried ones. Let's crack open one of these and have a little look inside. So we put a macro lens on to get as close as we can to this. And it's really interesting to see how even this looks. I'm genuinely interested to see how this tastes when we brew it now. I was terrified before. Now I'm just super curious. Now I'm not going to put this coffee through a fancy grinder. Well, this is a fancy grinder, but this Comandante has suffered over the years, grinding many strange things. This probably, will it be the worst thing it's ground? I don't know. Should I spray that? I should probably still give it a spritz. Maybe it doesn't need a spritz. Maybe oil works as well as water to prevent static. It might just gum up. I just don't know. Ooh. So uh, notes of a hand grinder, you feel an extra layer of like crunchiness to it, like hardness to it, but it's not too bad to grind. I guess let's give it a little sniff. No real static. Maybe a little bit vegetable-y. Am I just thinking about fries though? Here we go. Not unusual bloom, little swirl. See how we're looking? Not, not too gassy, I would say. A little gas, a little gas. Now I was a little concerned that the oil would clog the filter paper that doesn't seem to be happening too much, too much, which is good. We're, we're drawing down pretty normally. Colors looking okay. It's looking like we made coffee. All right, bit of a muddy bed. Do deep fried coffee beans produce more fines? We may never know. Well, let's just pour, let's pour a small cup. Let's not be ambitious today. Deep fried coffee. A first for me. Cheers. That's good. That's, that's good. That's good. It's not like this incredible floral cup of coffee, but it's, it's weirdly good. I'm uncomfortable with this. Let me, one more, one more. If I'm being mean, it's slightly underdeveloped. There's a little vegetableiness to it, but the texture is Lovely. It's not greasy. It's sort of soft and almost buttery and, and rich, but not yucky and fatty and I, I, I'm a bit confused. Let me put it this way. I've had significantly worse cups of coffee served to me in cafes, in good cafes. Uh, uh, this is like a nice cup of coffee. It's not fatty or greasy or weird. It's not remotely acidic, actually. That's kind of weird. It's just sort of soft and round. What I'm not saying is start deep frying your coffee, everybody. This is not the, the sort of best expression of the raw coffee here. That's a really interesting, complex, aromatic raw coffee. That is not an interesting, aromatic cup of coffee, but it is a weirdly nice cup of coffee. And I don't know what to do about that. I don't really know how to deal with that emotionally as much as anything else. And the, actually the reduced acidity and the kind of texture of that make me think I need to brew it again a different way. We're going to need to pull a shot of this. I don't have much coffee. I'm going to have to get this pretty ripe or drink some maybe wonky extractions, but I'm going to do my best while I get set up and prepped and cleaned down for that. There's a short ad for this video sponsor, which is Squarespace. If you need a website or a domain, then I would recommend Squarespace. Recently, I needed both. I had a new book coming out and I needed to build a website. So I turned to Squarespace because it's so easy for me to put together something that's beautiful and works across every platform, every device. 
You start with one of their templates and just add in your words, your images. It's so easy to tweak and adjust the little details to make it just how you want it. But at the end of publishing that website, I'm also aware that there's so much more that Squarespace offer. You can do stuff like members only areas. You can do stuff like email campaigns. You can obviously run it as an e-commerce shop if you wanted to. As I always say, don't take my word for it. Use the link down below and sign up for a free trial. Build something, create your own website. And when you're ready to launch, use code James Hoffman for 10% off any website or domain. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So for the espresso, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dose 18 grams in, aim for 40 out in about 30 seconds, see how that goes. I'm gonna paper filter it. I'm gonna use the Weber Unifilter. I'm gonna use a puck screen too, and we'll see what happens. Now this wasn't the first shot that I pulled, and every time I pulled shots, weird stuff, weird stuff happened. So this is actually, as disgusting as it looks, one of the better looking shots. Now a couple of things to note. The 18 gram dose obviously contained quite a lot of oil, and so in the, in the sort of basket it was sitting really low down, like a kind of 16 gram dose. So, you know, that doesn't bode well for the amount of oil in this thing. It's weirdly cloudy, so obviously a lot has been emulsified in here which would be why the crema is non-existent, because oil is going to disrupt the crema very effectively. So even though this is paper filtered, I'd say that's a pretty greasy shot. It looks a bit like, you know, like um, bulletproof coffee, the, the butter coffee thing that goes the same kind of color. Let's not talk about that now. Let's talk about deep fried espresso. Cheers. Do you know, oh, kind of got my hopes up after the filter brew. That wasn't that bad. That's bad. That's okay. Don't, don't deep fry your espresso beans. Don't do that. It is greasy. It is greasy in a way that um, the filter brew wasn't. That's, that's disgusting. That's just disgusting. Don't do that. Oh no, that's worse. That's worse. Like acidic, metallic, Harsh, unpleasant, no sweet, no texture, greasy, buttery in the wrong kind of way. Just awful. Oh. Here's the treat. The fattiness makes it linger. It doesn't, it does, the water doesn't help that much. So at last, we have an answer to the age old question. Should you deep fry your coffee? Probably not, but maybe once if you're kind of curious and you're gonna brew it as filter coffee because it wasn't that bad. I do wonder if I've made potentially a delicious bar snack. Some people like to eat coffee beans. I'm not really a big fan of that. Maybe a deep fried coffee bean is a better eating experience than a, than a non deep fried coffee bean. If you want to lose a tooth, that could be a viable option. Joking aside, I do feel it was interesting to, to sort of look at the sort of science of roasting with a different kind of medium to do the heat transfer. You know, doing that with a deep fryer it worked, and, and sort of the science is sort of the science. It's going to work. It was interesting to do, surprising in so many ways, and I hope you enjoyed following along on this particular journey. But now I want to hear from you down in the comments below. Are you up to try this? I'm not saying it's a good idea. I'm just saying, if you're curious, it's a thing you could do. If you do it, let me know, but don't do it. Probably don't do it. All that leaves for me to do now is say thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.